let us to receive these holy nights as an empty cup and that Allah knows best what we're in need of and let Allah to grant it and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad nazar to be upon and to grant these realities and that these ulul am and the king of which Imam Ali salam, the king of ulul am that his nazar be upon us inshaAllah, that his rida and satisfaction to be upon us, our families and our communities and to be dressed by immense blessings inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Today we have an interactive uh, Thursday, do you have any, any questions and I'll try my best to see how I'm feeling. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi Ya Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. In one of your speeches you said, Allah is not in the heavens or the earth but inside the heart of the believer. Can you elaborate on that? Sayyidina Awza Billahi Minash Shaitan Radhi Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. That is a hadith of Prophet that Allah described that I'm not on heavens and I'm not on earth. But I'm on the heart of my believer and that the, the quest is, is not to reach a location up or on this earth to struggle only for heaven or struggle only for the material world to find God in a location, Allah in a location and the Prophet giving isharat for us through many holy hadiths that what you're looking for is in your heart. Another holy hadith is, who knows himself will know his Lord. Again the direction of the focus that these awliyaullah come and they teach us the meaning of these holy hadiths. They're not the hadith translators where somebody masters Arabic, speaks on something and just basically translate. But the holy hadiths are like a isharat that when awliyaullah read it, the rest of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad begins to teach it because they are connected to this living heart of all realities. They merely mention those key words and it begins to flow inshaAllah from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad its realities. So whom knows themselves will know their Lord and Arif. An arif is somebody who is uh, looking for realities and that the quest for these realities was not to find it amongst a, a specific uh, center or a masjid or a location on earth. And then also that, that location for the heavens, where are you going to target that location? And that Allah gave our creation an immense gift that the monkey doesn't have, the giraffe doesn't have and that no creature has, gave a heart in which Allah's Divinely Presence can be found. Allah's Divinely Kingdom can be found. So this immense piece of flesh that Allah has given to us is an immense opportunity. For the servant to, we said before every verse of Holy Qur'an that refers to Kaaba, it's a verse to your heart. That everything you want to do with the Kaaba you should be focusing first for your heart. Before you go for Hajj, clean your own Kaaba, wash your heart, take away the idols of your heart, our heart, my heart, take away all the bad characteristics of my, my, my house of worshipness. And that's why Prophet's life was a reflection of these realities. How many years Prophet was struggling in Mecca? Thirteen years of fighting the people surrounding the Kaaba which is an analogy for us. Do you think that relatives, family, people, places, all the things around us are going to let our house and our heart to be worshipping Allah? So no, so Prophet is teaching, if I, if I struggled 13 years to perfect the state of my heart before Allah opens Medina, the city of lights, again the heavenly kingdom. So then we must have an enormous phase in which we are 
continuously struggling with ourself and that to be vigilant on my heart, not let anything into my heart, not to let the bad character and bad desires enter into the heart, they contaminate the presence of that Divinely Light. And that's what they're meant by that reality. So the more they, they wash it, they cleanse it, they purify it, then they understood that they, they, they make the dhikr of Allah but if you really want Allah in your heart then you should have the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Because nobody can bring the reality of Allah more than Sayyidina Muhammad What you try to call of Allah, what you try to achieve of the reality of Allah is nowhere in comparison to what Prophet will bring. So it means by making a salawat that's then now the secrets of all of what Prophet gave. Why did he say then, make one mention of me and Allah sends my soul ten times when Allah has no time, what that ten means for our reality? Prophet is giving us an opportunity that if I come and I come into your heart and I come into your reality I'm bringing the light of Allah is shahidan, mubashiran wa nadiran. Prophet doesn't come empty, he comes loaded, a fuluq mashkhoon, a loaded ship. Is the heart of Holy Qur'an, Yaseen, means that everything about the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad begin now to enter into the heart of the ashiqeen, they make salawats, they, they do the mawlid, they support the mawlids, all of these to build that love so that Prophet is strong within their presence. But then no doubt if Prophet is with you then who, who, then what Allah clarified, I'm with Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, and this is the best of company. If Prophet is in your heart with you, loving you because you love him you're happy with him and he's happy with you. Imagine then all the Sahabi are there, Prophet doesn't go anywhere alone, all the Ahlul Bayt are there, all the awliya fi samahi wa fi ard are there because they are all muqaddam and servants of the reality. If they're all there no doubt Allah is in that heart and that's what Allah is meaning by. That you're not going to find me in a location here and there but in the heart that's filled with this love of course I'm there. I'm there in that presence and, uh, and, and Allah is in every emotion of the ashiqeen. When they cry Allah is in their tears. Don't anthropomorphize, <laughs> don't make Allah into a human, mujassimiyoon. Allah has nothing to do with our humanity and that's, that's the wrong. Allah is an energy, uh, energy is emotion, is a state of love, a state of being. It's not something physical for us to understand that you're going to find a location. But when Allah's love and ishq resides within the heart because you love all whom Allah loves, if their love is all there, no doubt Allah's love on top of that. Inna ladina yubayyunaka inna ma yubayyoon Allah. Allah has now put His hand on the hand of Prophet and that Divinely love is there. And when they feel that love that every tear that comes from them Allah is within that emotion. Every, every love that they feel and good character they feel that is the gift from Allah's Divinely presence. And that's why they give such a, 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 an important example on how to reach that state. If you don't clean yourself and you're waiting just to get to the heavens to see Allah then this whole world was just uh, you know an awful right because people are doing bad things, horrible things, bad characteristics and they're very far from Allah and most, end, most will end up in difficulty in the grave. What Prophet wanted is, no, no you better find Allah's presence now on this earth and sit with those who know what that reality is. So then that's not something we're waiting for judgment day to, to get through the punishment of the grave is right now I want to feel Allah's presence, I want to clean my heart, I want to bring the love of, of all these realities in, I want to feel these, these good and pure and clean emotions. 
So alhamdulillah that's the way of marifah and it's the way of tasawwuf and, and tazkiyah and cleaning. Can you imagine a people who don't take a path what they call Sufism, its actual word is tazkiyah which is cleaning. They don't take a path of showering and cleaning. That would be the equivalent of a bunch of homeless people. You don't want to hang out with a whole bunch of homeless people who don't shower and clean. People whom don't have tazkiyah, they don't have cleaning is what they're admitting to you. We are not the people who clean, we find Allah without cleaning. But well, you can't do that without wudu anyways. So how could you not clean your heart and, and clean your wujud and clean your entire being? So Sufism is its reality is tazkiyah and cleaning. So we are people who clean inside and clean outside. What's the purpose of only washing outside when the inside may be rotten? The shaitan is already inside blocking everything. So alhamdulillah. Bismillah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Who are the Buddha? Who? Who are the Buddha? They're the Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are different categories of awliyaullah and I think we have an article on, on them and that, that's all that they talk about. Who they are, where they are, what their names are, no idea. Not, not for us to talk online with that. Could you imagine if everybody knew where all these awliya and they would go around and kill them? That's not something anyone talks about, no Allah reveals who His servants are, they're hidden. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the benefits of taking notes? The benefic- benefits of taking notes, Alam bil Qalam, the first command to Prophet Iqra is that read and in those first six verses are the entire realities of the heart and the opening of the heart. That when Allah says, Alam bil Qalam that I'm going to I'm going to teach you by qalam and before we go to the very high understanding of qalam we've said many times and we have articles that you can, you can go to the new Muhammad and just type in what is qalam and it has all those realities in there that Allah gave us this index finger and the thumb and by means of this index finger and thumb has an immense secret. And this qalam has an immense reality. As soon as we touch it, we begin to manifest. First level of what awliya wounds from our training through them and, and uh, our accompanying our lives through them is they want to change your kitab. Right now your kitab is your good and bad, actions mainly bad and the reality of your kitab is that. And it's only that. And what they want from taking Muhammadan haqqaiqs and the level in which they're teaching and speaking is at a level that people can't even comprehend its value. Even the external scholars on earth don't understand Muhammadan haqqaiqs because they don't eat from that so they don't understand it. But if we could understand what a Muhammadan haqqaiq is and its weight beyond all the jewels of earth. If you put all those jewels together its weight is uncomprehensible. As soon as you hear these Muhammadan haqqaiqs and you start to write in your book actually that knowledge is manifesting for you. Because you have a book and your kiram al-katibin your angels who are honoured because they write the Muhammadan reality, that's what gives them their kiram, their owners only because they're going to document all the Muhammadan realities. As soon as you write, oh Allah is in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad you can write all these haqqaiqs, these are now manifesting from your finger on that page but more important is that when you write here. The angels are writing in your book, you know the old photocopy thing, you would write like this and then there was another thing writing with you. 
So as soon as you go, ah, left, bad, turn or put it in English, the angels are also writing exactly what you're writing. Wow. Now all of a sudden your kitab in that one night changed your entire destiny. And that's why we have a song, Lagatu Ni'mati Ishqi, that your hand changed my whole destiny. The reality is not their hand but their knowledge is that they give you. As soon as your hand writes their knowledge, your entire destiny changed. One, because now your kitab has realities that, that was never on that kitab, never was going to come to that kitab, never was going to find that. It's not something everybody finds you know 10 years into this or 5 years into this. This is just Allah's ni'mat when He, when he grants this, the servant to take from that fountain of kawthar. So as soon as they write that reality immediately everything is changing about them. That everything that is written upon them and on their, their book is now changing. The weight of the book is changing. The owner of the angels who are writing it are changing. Their dress changes because they're now the scribes of the Muhammadan haqqaiq. So imagine the one whom is writing and writing and writing and writing, they themselves are noble scribes. Because they are documenting the haqqaiqs of Sayyidina Muhammad Then through the darajat it keeps raising, Allah begins to change the sustenance for that person because it's no longer a regular person. This is a person walking the earth that is documenting the most beloved, Allah's Habib, the most beloved of the entire created universes. Think of all these billions of universes and how many of them know of a Muhammadan haqqaiq but this person on this earth is learning that. What is a change in their kitab and the owner and of who they are, what Allah going to send them of rizq? What you, what you send a noble soul is different rizq than what you send just a regular soul. The lights in which Allah is going to dress them, the blessings in which Allah is going to dress them, the, the amal and actions that Allah will begin to dress them because of that nobility again is unimaginable. And as a result of writing it, that night when they're sleeping they're actually going into it because their soul will ask Allah that, Ya Rabbi I heard these haqqaiqs of which my body didn't understand anything or very little and it doesn't matter. But Allah will offer the servant to swim in that reality. And that's why Prophet said, seek knowledge all the way to Qin. Means take a life in which to continuously seek knowledges because the knowledges are in eternal dress upon the soul which have no limit. But you know just studying wudu uh, one time, two time, but can you imagine all your life you hear the same you know stories for 30 years and they're not haqqaiqs and they're just translations and, and, and usul and fiqr that's one, one round is good, second round is okay, three times maybe they're too much. But those are not the ones that nourish the soul for eternity. So the haqqaiqs and the reality are the one that nourishes the soul of the servant inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What is the connection of Sayyidina Ali and the letter Ba? InshaAllah InshaAllah the 19 letters of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and the 19 letters of Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussain and Muhammad the whole encompassing umbrella of that reality that each of these Ahlul Bayt have an immense reality in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem its umbrella is Liwal Hamd, is the reality of Muhammad the most praised. So we visualize that uh, Muhammad is the one that is all encompassing like the Jubba, the Khirka that, that covers everything. And then when we say bi-ismi has to do with the secret of uh, Imam Ali, bi-ismi ala most high which is Ali, Allah then the haqqa Ali from what he gave of his most high name and this reality the dressing Imam Ali salam. And then the whole of Qur'an its realities are like a laser that all of Qur'an 
in 30 joes like a laser it can be compacted. All these 30 joes can be pushed into the seven verses of Surah Fatiha means like seven springs of Fatiha are, are dressing and flowing fountains. From each verse all of Qur'an is flowing, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen all the verses of Hamd is flowing from those verses. These seven Surah Fatiha wrapped into Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and all of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is in this bah. And that's what Imam Ali Salam is the nukht under the bah. So Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem all the uloom of Qur'an everything is like a door that's what we call the bab. And Prophet sends holy hadith is that I'm the city wa Ali Babahu. I'm the city of all knowledge because he is sallallahu Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. All the uloom that opening up when you say Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all the knowledges are on the soul of Prophet. But you can't get to that without going through the door of the bah. So the doorkeeper of that reality, the ulul bab. These are category of awliyaullah who are the people of the gate, of the door, of the bab. Their master, their leader, ya Imam Ali salam, that have to pass through his zulfiqar which is the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadu Rasulullah and that their head and their understanding of using their head cannot be used into this reality. That they have to be a people whom open their heart and shut off their head. And in the last days becomes more and more difficult because of the active head, active head, waswas, manic, all these, these problems that people are having because dajjal is touching them. As a result they become manic, they become panic, they become too much in their head and already that's the sign that shaitan is, is grabbing them. and sort of giving his blessings to them. Those whom they are able to shut their head and use their heart and they learn stronger, stronger to keep shutting the head, keep shutting the head because the man of deceit is coming. So if you're not taking that seriously you can imagine when his, his full, full footprint is on this earth everything will be of a deceit, every imaginable thing will be deception. And the person will have no safety with their head and the only safety will be through their heart. When they learned on La ilaha illallah that's why the first zikr of every tariqah, La ilaha illallah. So La is on your forehead that don't use your head, La means no. To your right, ilaha illallah, nothing but Allah into the heart. So they'll learn to shut their head in which their head is completely shut off inshaAllah and that their heart is active. When the heart is active it can reflect the light into the head. But the ones whom are using their head, becoming manic, becoming waswasi, shaitan is already touching them, touching them, touching them and that's an that's immense danger. It will only increase as, as the footprint of the gel is coming in. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Modern science says that energy cannot be created nor be destroyed. How can we reconcile with this Islam as only Allah Almighty cannot be created or destroyed? I don't know if, if that's a correct statement. I think they said energy cannot be destroyed, but they can manifest energy. They're creating energy through water turbines, through power sources, through everything. They don't even know where electricity came from. So that's something different. I wouldn't try to verify scientific hypothesis because 20 years ago they said smoking was good for you. Now they say, no you're actually killing everybody. So chasing their hypothesis from one day to the next not important, don't waste our time on that.
but to understand energy in relationship to spirituality is important for us. Means how to take our energy, how to bring the energy, how, how energy doesn't die. And that's a proof of the, the, our living beyond our physicality. That when your physicality dies when you want to talk to somebody and they say, where's the proof of God? The, the, the proof of an afterlife is the proof that when you die they know their science. Where does your body go? Where does your energy go? Your body goes to the dirt but where's the energy of your soul? And it has no more mass so the energy is, is without any gravitational hold on it. Because they don't understand barzakh like Allah holds the, the, the gravity of their their light on earth. But when they're free from that reality they have no gravitational hold to this earth. They fly and they visit wherever Allah wants them to visit. But where does these energies go of these souls? And because along their life they picked up all sorts of experiences and what they call residue. As a result all of these experiences the light has a memory of what it went through. You know the light when it went through a light bulb it remembered it, when it went through a power plant it remembers has a residue of wherever that energy went. Imagine in the soul it's databasing every experience and it's come onto this earth for an experience. But to teach based on energy is very important so that we understand the, the significance of malakut and the heavenly world. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam How do we become mindful of always cleaning our hearts? How to become mindful of always cleaning the heart is you, you do your meditation every day. And before you do the meditation you have to do a little bit of your muhasaba and accounting because you have to say, how was that day? So that's the only way that's why that the whole system is practiced. If you don't sit to meditate at the end of the day and, and take a hisab, take an accounting, what did I do wrong? Who did I hurt with my words, with my character and who did I yell at and what did I scream about and all my, my bad characteristics. If you don't then you're also one, you're not going to ask Allah for forgiveness so you will be punished for those actions at a later date or time. So that's why it's important to take a muhasaba one. So that you know what you're making istighfar for, that I forgive me Ya Rabbi I did this wrong, forgive me I said this wrong, forgive me I lost this uh, temper of mine, forgive me like this, all these things. You have to take an account for it so that you can ask Allah first for what you've done wrong. Otherwise shaitan fools the servant to think they've done nothing wrong, sleep on it. When you sleep on, on a sin it become like a scab of shaitan onto the person. Because they didn't ask istighfar, they didn't ask Allah to take it away and Prophet describe it become like the scabs of Satan on somebody. That when he would see people and they had all scabs on them, he said, these are the scabs of shaitan on this person, they're not making istighfar because they're not taking hisab to see what they did wrong that day. So it's essential in our belief that every night to think, what I did wrong out of and I'm asking istighfar, I'm asking forgiveness. Especially for the ones that you know if you lost your temper, you got angry, you yelled, you shout, you did all these things. Those you have to ask Allah for istighfar otherwise these calcifications will multiply and Allah is, is patient. Don't think if it didn't hit lightning, didn't hit you yesterday or tomorrow that anything's forgotten by Allah so it could be time and something comes. So it's important and essential that immediately to make istighfar, to make a, an accounting of ourselves, asking Allah forgiveness. When the servant begins to understand what they did and ask for forgiveness then the normal understanding is then you shouldn't try to keep repeating that every day. If every night you're crying that you did something wrong and every night you're asking forgiveness then you say, well then you shouldn't be doing that again and again and again and again. And that's then the, they get to understand, they see a pattern, why is this always happening? And that's what Allah wants is that take an account and see a pattern in what you're doing. Then that's when they get to understand themselves and understand their Lord and understand that 
the, the, their energy is, is not controllable, their, their communication skills are not correct. And you're asking Allah for forgiveness, at what point He may not forgive if it's going to keep repeating, repeating and it's increasing maybe. Some people they're getting angrier and angrier because the dajjal is everywhere and his, his, his influence is, is everywhere, everywhere moving with their medicines, with their… with everything on this earth now is just uh, inoculating people with a, a dajjali energy. So it's very important inshaAllah for the muhasaba and accounting of oneself. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How can one know the seven names he has? By first knowing the one name that you have. <laughs> Means who knows himself will know his Lord. That it's important to, to know yourself. So the first and the, the lowest name on this scale is the one that your, your parents named you with. And do you really know that name? So that's why you… this is very advanced level muhasaba, muraqaba that to know myself, what are, what are my characteristics, what, what are, what are my, my vices, what angers do I have, what sins do I have, what are the, the vices of my characteristics. If I don't know myself and I have no understanding then what, what, what my Lord is. You may be thinking your Lord is Allah but when you get to know yourself you say, oh my God my, maybe my Lord is the devil. Because my character is like this, my, my anger is like this, maybe their Lord is smoking, maybe their Lord is drinking, maybe their Lord is, is uh, fashion, whatever is influencing them and overwhelming them and their character, that's actually your Rabb, it's not Rabbi al -Ala. That's so overly simplified for people to think that their Lord is truly Allah they may be on a path towards understanding if their Lord is Allah But we have to be honest with ourselves. When I'm, um, I succumb to my vices then no those are the Lords. Those are the Lords that have locked me to follow them. The Lord of anger, the, the Lord of uh, drinking, the Lord of smoking, the Lord of yelling and shouting and screaming. Those are the Lords of the servant that control that servant like an avatar and a puppet. When the servant truly is sincere and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned then at very high levels they can begin to understand that they are, they are in, in the process of, of reaching towards Divine Lordship in which they are submitting to Allah And then Allah grants them the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and oceans of sincerity. And those their emotions are, are you know divine grace. At every moment Allah is on them changing and shifting. But that, that's the very high level, first level of the tariqah then is the master who is this person I'm with all the time, me. And then what's making me to act and react the way I do, to know it, identify it, take an accounting every night of it and begin to fight it. If I don't fight my bad characteristics and get rid of those, you know, the, those, those lords of vices so that my lordship can be for the higher because the good character should be a lord over me, my Divine love should be a, a lord over me, Sayyidina Muhammad should be a lord over me. But before I can reach to those I have to get rid of all the, all the, the criminal elements, the bad guys, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, when making notes on a video, should we write what we hear as much as possible without pausing or should we pause and write each word? Which is more beneficial? No, you can, you know, get a summary, summary. if it's an important word and you want to pause it, you pause it. If it's not, you can just write it and, and get the gist of it, the idea of it. You can go back later, I mean if you're not transcribing, if you're transcribing for, for our talks and for us. We need it verbatim, not your understanding. So this if it's for yourself, do whatever you want. If it's our transcribing team, no, we don't accept anyone else's interpretation or words or, or summarize our, our sentence into something else. It's essential that it sounds exactly like the shaykh's talk so that people can get the flavor of his language, his, his, his errors in his language or his, his mannerisms in his language. 
But if you're writing for yourself you can get just the gist of what you're trying to understand. If there's a specific word you stop, you pause it, write that word so that you can become faster and faster with it, inshaAllah. It's all personal choice of what the, what the servant wants to do, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Do our deceased relatives know about our deeds? Are they shown to them? Walaykum As Salaam If your deceased relatives were good and, and pious, inshaAllah, yes. And that's what Sadaqa Jariya is that uh, those whom passed away, the fathers and the mothers, if they were pious and they're free from difficulty. Every action that their child makes, angel will ask who was the father, who was the mother and the amal of that action begins to dress them. So most definitely they see the barakah, the rahmah, all of the, the tajallis that are dressing them and if their actions are with awliya actually their stations will be moving. They get a, like an upgrade from one apartment they'll be moved into the vicinity of Sayyidina Muhammad so it's, it's completely different understanding. Something was destined for them a different reality. As soon as Allah destines their child to be of that reality and in the precincts and in the nearness and the proximity of, of Sayyidina Muhammad and they're under the, the, the tutelage of awliyaullah that most definitely they're all upgraded into that presence because nobody wants a paradise without the people that you love. In the hikmah and the wisdom of Allah guiding that child was to bring their whole line into that reality, into proximity of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. So it has many, many, many blessings. It's not something small that's why you know that the support to awliya, support for their projects, support for whatever you're doing, writing, all of that is nothing in comparison to going down the street at the local center and this is not something even comparable. That the destiny we said just their knowledge can shift your entire destiny. Imagine then the support, the actions and all that you do with them, entire movement of everything into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Previously you have mentioned that unseen beings can touch the head, can start to itch and waswas can increase including doubts. Is there a quick solution? Walaykum As Salaam there's nothing quick. Everything is, is based on the, the whole spiritual practices. We said that as their energy is increasing and, and their anger and movement and everything that they're doing, that's why we gave this whole talk now about asking for forgiveness. When you don't ask for forgiveness, you don't take an account every night, it's you're showing Allah that you don't really care and whatever will happen will happen and that's not good at all because it tips the scale of a person in which they get closer towards the hands of shayateen. And in this day and age the, the touch and the jali of a shaitan immediately the person will lose their mind. And then that is a horrific, horrific understanding of, of what's coming and uh, that's I think we talked a year ago about this birdcage, was it birdcage? Yeah, something happening, you know when shaitan touches the, the people and they just become belligerent and angry and yelling and screaming, they're losing their mind. They lose their mind and then Allah become fed up with them and that's gone, it's lost their mind. And in, in last days the shaykhs are very weary of anyone whose mind is not working properly because they can be extremely dangerous with tariqah because you don't know what they're capable of, what they're thinking, their, their wires are not uh, making sense. So that's a, a very big danger and it's a cure is through medicine, take the medicines that people have been prescribed diagnose that you have a problem and that you need medicine for it. Not to just say, I'm going to you know, live with this insanity and be crazy because it will catch you and you'll be gone. And then the noble sunnah, majestic sunnah is to keep your head covered, to keep yourself in wudu, to, to do the salawas, to do the practices and, and everything else that's being prescribed. You know, don't let shaitan to, to 
convince you to, to you know lose yourself and lose your cover, lose your protection because you're right in the middle of an immense battlefield. We talk about Dajjal coming out as like it's a battlefield. If in the middle of that battlefield you think you're going to just you know lose your armor and uh, drop your flag and, and think everything's okay, it's, it's, that's a horrific… Uh, that's a horrific understanding. So that's why they keep telling you that Dajjal is here, that the, the Dajjal time is here, is here, is here, is why. They're blowing a trumpet for people to be warned that something very bad is now on the earth and, and happening. So that to keep yourself in your sunnah, this is uh, the gift of Sayyidina Muhammad for his nation. Don't ever take your sheep on the, on the border. You know, don't graze your sheep on the border of what's not halal. Keep yourself within what's halal, what is destined for you, what is good for you, what is a protection for you. So that never to accidentally cross into a different understanding. And that's, that's the time that we are living in inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, do you have any tips or suggestions for the youth in these times where they are building education and career? You all our teachings are for the youth. So alhamdulillah study the energy, study the practices and uh, build their careers, everything is pretty much on hold now, everyone's sitting at home, colleges are, are online so not much of that career building is happening anywhere and uh, everyone is being locked down at home and, and vaccinated and, and uh, universal pay coming for people. So I, I, uh, I wouldn't worry about that, I would worry more about uh, playing the videos, doing live zikr in your home, in your living room, telling the kids that you know we got nothing to do, let's the, watch the shaykh and let's do the live zikr with them, let's do the mafil with them. These are the things we need in difficulties and Allah has already started the marketing program that everybody is you know forced to be at home and, and this is the best time and they're accountable for the time that they're given to build themselves and build their practices and so alhamdulillah with all this media and, and apps and all the upgrades and all these programs, all of these things their time you know Allah is the best of planners. You know, lifetime of having these things and, and nobody was of any interest to it. And then Allah is the best of planners, made the whole world go into their rooms. Now sitting in their living room they didn't know what to do. So then everybody turn on something, learn something and you, you have an audience that's captive, right? Because dunya is a distraction like Sayyidina Yusuf that when the, the people were coming after Sayyidina Yusuf and you know, they're the cutting their hands and that was an analogy of dunya. When the dunya is chasing him too much, his actually reply to Allah is better for me to go into jail than what this dunya has in store for me. And that for us is an understanding and spirituality that you better to isolate yourself. And in your isolation you should be practicing all the practices you need to survive what's coming. You don't lose sight of what the shaykh is telling you, say, oh nothing's coming, nothing's coming but then you be caught in a tornado not connected to anything and it comes in, in but one second you know. All of a sudden you turn on the news and Houston is, is the center of oil and, and has uh, no power. So how's that possible? They're the headquarters for the petroleum industry. And they got hit with a snowstorm and no power and their whole grids went down and, and everything collapsed. It's but one shout and Allah changed everything. So it's a time of, of great uh, difficulties everywhere so our life is always just to be prepared, homes prepared. Our best preparation is for the heart and the character, the zikr and, uh, and then just pray that Allah grant us the foresight of whatever difficulty coming that we were ready for something, prepared for something, we had some food, we had all the things that we needed inshaAllah and then if we survive alhamdulillah and, uh, and on to the next one inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ila sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ali sahbihi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqat al nashman liyat al aliyya. وسائر وسادتنا وسلقنا الفاتحة